These are some of the worst dishes to have ever been served on Hell's Kitchen. What is the liquid? That is blood, chef. And this contestant just plain old forgot to finish cooking his dish. Ramsey should be given a medal for sacrificing his health for our entertainment. I mean, some of these dishes are absolutely repulsive. Guess which dish had the great chef hurl his guts out? Like this. And hey, fair warning, don't watch this video while having dinner. Well, let's continue from where I left off, shall we? Okay. So this is the exotic tartare dish by Matt Siegel from season four. He was boasting to the cameras about how his dish was gonna rock Ramsey's world. And I think it did, but not in a way he was expecting. So what was so exotic about it, do you ask? It was a mind-boggling combo of raw venison, diver scallops, caviar, and, wait for it, grated white chocolate. Ramsey couldn't believe his ears and questioned if he was being punked. I mean, what were you smoking to come up with this combination? Man, I got secondhand embarrassment watching this. Oh, that was ruthless. Now, you'd think this would bring Matt's ego down a notch, right? Well, think again. Matt, bless his heart, couldn't comprehend what Ramsey found so repulsive about his creation. The poor guy was genuinely perplexed. To be fair, Matt, you put white chocolate on seafood. Like, white chocolate on seafood. Duh! Does that ring a bell, or should I ring it for you? But at least Matt cooked it through. Okay. How would you react if burnt meat, an apple burger, or a hairy lobster landed at your table? I'd lose my appetite right there and then. But when this contestant presented some wet pastry, Ramsey about lost it. So what happened is, in episode 10 of season 13, Ro and Aaron found themselves in the thick of it. In the intense heat of the Indian cuisine challenge, Ro was the third contender from her team to face down Ramsey's judgment, and she faced off against Bryant in the cod round. With anticipation building, Ro unveiled her phyllo wrapped cod creation, only to be met with disappointment. Ro a chance to put the red team ahead with her phyllo wrapped cod. The phyllo place is wet, yeah. so it's like eating a mouthful yeah. of wet. Like, seriously, a wet phyllo. Now, Ramsey's comparison to a wet tissue was harsh. Fair, but harsh. But at this point of the competition, he had high expectations from the contestants. And Roe clearly failed to make an impression. See, I guess. Two. But she wasn't the only one who failed the challenge. When it was time for Aaron to present his lamb dish, he was as confident as they come. Well, you have to see the brilliant dish he brought to the table. So having studied a little bit of Indian food, I did a date chutney inside of the phyllo. Oh boy. Inside the phyllo pastry, Aaron had tucked some date chutney with a little drizzle of mango powder on the top of the lamb. A bold move, but the judges had some equally bold things to say. The lamb is cooked very nice. Bizarre, the old uh, chutney inside phyllo pastry. Disaster doesn't even describe the half of it. I mean, the seeds and the dates and the peculiar phyllo stuffed chutney just failed to make an impression. But you have to give it to him. Well, he did come up with a really wild combination. Unlike this next contestant who was so overconfident that he ended up not cooking his dish enough. In season 11, episode 10, during the quinceanera planning challenge, John Scallion had a word with Michael Langdon, reminding him to ensure that his meat was prepared in time since the clock was ticking away. Determined, Michael took charge and prepared a steak dish, becoming the final contender from the blue team to present his creation up for judgment. He was up against Amanda Giblin, and Ramsey actually liked her dish. Michael, however, felt that his flavors were superior. But were they? Let's hear it. You know what they call that? Bald-faced lines. Upon closer inspection, it was evident that the steak was severely undercooked. Oh, the horror. Blood still lingered on the plate, signaling that the dish was far from being ready. While Michael insisted it wasn't blood, the truth was hard to ignore. 
I mean, what do you think this is? His dish was promptly criticized for its raw and undercooked state, much to Michael's frustration. I don't know about you, but this made me throw up, and I think I can't eat steaks for a few weeks now. Not exaggerating even a bit. And by the way, I had a field day learning about all the bacteria that raw meat is contaminated with. When ingested, they can make you really sick. Like, really, really sick. I am talking diarrhea, stomach cramps, vomiting, and a fever, as per the CDC. This can strike between 6 and 24 hours after eating raw, undercooked meat. And it lasts between 24 hours and many days, depending on the type of bacteria. So yeah, Chef Michael, for the sake of your family's health, I hope you're only taking over grilling duties whenever there's a barbecue. At least he didn't serve dog food to the judges <laughs> like this next contestant. Oh yeah, Sade's blunder will go down in Hell's Kitchen history as the most stupid mistake ever. You see, I get it. It was the dog show planning challenge, but Sade took it to the next level. I thought we were cooking for dogs. I mean, she actually believed that they were preparing food for the dogs. But you have to see her at work. The passion and commitment with which she crafted a <laughs> braised beef dish for her four-legged customers was remarkable. I've never done this before, but I guess it makes sense. As for Steve and Bryant, though, they were baffled. I don't know if I fried anything for dogs. So they not making too much sense right now. It's crazy she never realized that she was the odd one out until she saw what everyone else had plated. And when Ramsay laid eyes on her braised beef concoction, well, Sade was doomed. What is that? Braised beef? Braised beef. <laughs> Am I the only one here? Or does that sound fucking ridiculous? It looks like a dog shat all over my plate. Yeah, no doubt that it was ridiculous. And with it looking like dog crap on a plate, Ramsay was no doubt disappointed too. And the disappointment train kept on rolling, since fans were convinced that Sade had probably served the most embarrassing dish of all time. Moreover, what really annoyed viewers was the fact that she saw her entire team making dishes with prawns and pork chops, and yet she still couldn't figure out they weren't cooking for the dogs. Well, on the bright side, at least we know what she feeds her pets now, and gotta say, they're eating good. Meanwhile, the blue team suffered defeat and were punished with setting up the dining room for the next service and grooming the dog sent over by the American Kennel Club. Well, I hope her dish was put to good use here, but Sade wasn't thrilled about how things went down and just wanted to get it over with. And spray all of these bitches, and I'm not talking about the dogs either. In fact, she was so fed up that she contemplated spraying the red team with a hose whenever they walked by. Somebody was having a bad day. Now it's time to meet Krissa Schmerler. She may have seemed kind-hearted, but let's just say Hell's Kitchen wasn't exactly her cup of tea. Spoiler alert, in the 14th season, she landed a not-so-impressive 18th place. So that should tell you a lot about her culinary expertise. She presented a ginger-crusted chicken breast during the signature dish challenge inspired by, wait for it, the cookie aisle at the grocery store. Yep, you heard that right. Ramsey couldn't help himself and covered his face, bursting into uncontrollable laughter. And guess what? The entire audience joined in, turning poor Chris's moment into an awkward laugh fest. Oh, the embarrassment. Ramsey couldn't help but make a cheeky remark. I mean, he couldn't even manage to swallow one bite. Clearly, that was an abomination, and she just scored one point out of five. To make matters worse, Krissa even told the cameras that she's not used to people spitting out her food. Honestly, I felt bad for her here. Tough break, Krissa. But what you served was simply inedible. Oh, by the way, this reminds me of something similar that happened in season 16 when Jessica Boynton nervously took her place as the eighth contestant against Andrew Pierce from the red team to face Ramsey's judgment. Little did she know that her risotto dish was about to take an unexpected turn. Ah, it's okay, chefs. Spit happens. I, I mean, shit happens. And this is no big deal in Hell's Kitchen, as each and every day turns out to be a learning experience. But this next contestant, who claimed to be a professional chef, served something that wasn't even edible. I'm talking about Josh from season three. 
In the Leftovers Challenge, Ramsey noticed Josh's newfound speed and determination. Despite the challenge about being working with leftover ingredients to make something out of nothing, Josh was confident in his team's abilities. When it was his turn to be judged, he presented his chicken leg with pea tendrils, only to face down an exasperated Ramsey. Yeah, the chicken is not cooked all the way through. The sauce is disgusting. Yeah. And it's just... The acidic sauce and undercooked chicken certainly didn't impress. Especially not that they came from a so-called professional chef. So, how much did he score for his crappy dish? Disappointed in both of you. Zero for both of you. Back in line. Zero zip zilch nada. Absolutely nothing. But he wasn't the only Josh who screwed up on Hell's Kitchen. Yep. Season 14 introduced us to Josh Travato, and this dude ended up plating a revolting dish of his own in episode 7. During the Greek cuisine challenge, Josh, you know, I'm gonna call him Travato from now on, faced off against Allison, and their assigned dish for the day was lamb. In the midst of the plate-smashing chaos, he passionately shattered his first plate, only to be disappointed when he uncovered oranges. Let's go, Josh. Ah! Oh, damn. That sucks. Oranges, are you kidding me? With just 10 minutes left on the clock, he felt the pressure to speed up. As time ticked away, his worries escalated, and he feared his lamb wouldn't rest properly before being served. If my meat doesn't rest, it's gonna bleed out all over my plate. Come on, guys. When it was time for the judgment, he nervously presented his seared lamb with tricolored couscous, candied orange, and apple. Sadly, his efforts fell short. Like, way short. Candied orange and apple. What is the liquid? That is blood, chef. And that's not all. The dish was heavily criticized for resting atop a pool of blood because it hadn't rested properly. But believe it or not, that wasn't even the worst part. This is a, this is a one. Both Ramsey and guest judge Michael Salakis refused to taste the dish, and he ended up with only two points, which, hey, is more than his fellow Josh got at least. But this time, someone decided to teach Ramsey a few things, and that's when we meet Miss Manners. That would be Colleen Cleek. Her misguided confidence and overpriced instruction made her infamous. And did I mention that she was a cooking instructor despite not being formally trained? I can almost hear the collective gasp and see the raised eyebrows in the room. And how much does she charge? I don't think you're ready for this. How much do you charge? 300 per three to four hours. Wait. What? So she's not a trained chef herself, but she charges that outrageous amount to teach what exactly? Does she mean people pay her for this? Her signature dish was smoked chicken enchiladas with poblano cream sauce, and it was an epic culinary fail. You can guess how bad it was when Ramsey says this. You seriously charge $300 to teach people how to make that crap? Needless to say, he wasn't impressed, and neither is the internet. Colleen, already in a precarious situation, struggled to keep her mouth shut but she couldn't resist the temptation and blurted out this. I teach manners too, chef. Oh God, the audacity. She really thought she owned GR, huh? But everyone's a gangsta until Ramsey says, Okay, please, Miss Manners, fuck off back in line. Obviously she couldn't, and a frustrated Ramsey told her to step back in line. Now, that's what I call a total disaster, folks. But this next chef got eliminated because she couldn't even cook Hell's Kitchen's staple dish. Yep, I'm talking about Janae from season 13, who, in a tale as old as time, couldn't make a risotto to save her life. In the heat of the dinner service, Janae held down the fort at the appetizer station alongside Ashley. However, her focus on perfecting her risotto left her oblivious to the chaos around her. She was completely tuned out when her team needed her most. Well, I'm asking Janae for f***ing times and I'm not getting any answers. 45 seconds. She was literally ignoring Deneen and Katie's pleas for a time check, which had to have been beyond frustrating for them. When she finally sent her risotto, I'm sure you can guess how well it went down. It's mush! Janae is overcooked! Whoa! Believe it or not, putting mushy risotto in front of Ramsey makes him angry. The 
Imagine that. But that barely even describes it. Her dish was overcooked not just by three or five minutes, but by a whole 10 minutes. I'm surprised the rice hadn't completely disintegrated by that point. And guess how her subsequent attempts turned out? It's liquid. Her it down. It's too soupy. Her and chef. the lobster's raw. Shocking. Anyway, amidst the tension, Rose stepped in, urging Janae to get her act together. With Rose's guidance, Janae finally communicated effectively with Deneen allowing them to send out their first table of appetizers. However, both teams ended up as joint losers for the night anyway. During the nominations, Janae found herself in the hot seat, acknowledging her initial mistake, but refusing to own up to the thousand other blunders she made afterwards. Ramsey, unimpressed, delivered the final blow, stating, cooking risotto is elementary, but tonight, I found out Janae is still in kindergarten. With that, her journey in Hell's Kitchen came to an end. Yep, couldn't make a risotto to save her life. Or, well, her spot in the competition, I guess. Speaking of disasters, remember this episode in season three where Jen Yamola went dumpster diving? Yep, she retrieved the spaghetti she had thrown out in the garbage and proceeded to wash it. She almost actually cooked it again and claimed she would have served it too. That's easily one of the worst food offenses. So what happened is that Joanna Dunn was about to kill someone by serving rancid crab. So Ramsey threw her out and put Jen and Julia on the appetizer station. They were able to get some dishes out, but after she tossed out cooked spaghetti which she thought were not needed, what do you know? Ramsey asked for some on the very next ticket. In a panic, she grabbed some tossed spaghetti from the trash, but all thanks to Julia who stopped Jen dead in her tracks with absolutely no hesitation at all. At least someone was thinking straight. Indeed. Jen's lucky Ramsey didn't catch her. The comments on the Hell's Kitchen channel show how angry the viewers were. Some believe that she should have been 86th from the show after this incident. Others question that if she was willing to do this on camera, imagine what her hygiene standards are when nobody's watching. Yeah, food for thought, right? I can't understand what it is with all these contestants taking shortcuts. And here comes another one. You absolutely cannot cook a proper gumbo in 45 minutes. But Antonia Bregman from season 8 tried anyway. As you would expect, her Mardi Gras gumbo turned out to be a culinary catastrophe of epic proportions. When she proudly unveiled the dish to Ramsay, it was met with sheer shock and disbelief. Despite describing it as a plate of liquid shit, he bravely took a bite. What could go wrong, right? Well, everything. It was inedible. Even people on the internet are convinced that it must have tasted like actual shit or worse. And then this happened. Have you tasted that? No, I didn't get a chance to taste it, chef. Seriously? Who in their right mind wouldn't taste their own dish before getting it judged by Ramsay? That's a risky move in a high stakes competition like Hell's Kitchen. To add insult to injury, Ramsey decided to subject the rest of the contestants to Antonia's gastro adventure. If it wasn't already bad that he got sick. And now, he decided to share that misery with Antonia's competitors. To put it mildly, none of them were impressed. Rob took the opportunity to unleash his creative criticism, saying this. It was completely repulsive. I would have rather had a cat shit in my mouth than have eaten that any further. Nona and Boris weren't faring any better, with the flavors threatening to send them over the edge. Even Vinny couldn't find any redeeming qualities, likening it to slurping down a big old bowl of mud. Easily one of the worst, most repulsive dishes served on the show. If hell is real, I am sure in the ninth circle, they make you eat this. Obviously, she earned no points, and Ramsey declared it as the worst dish of the day, leading the red team to lose the signature dish challenge. And what a way to lose a challenge. While scrolling through the net, I found this Reddit user by the name Street Community 922 who asked viewers a million dollar question. Between Matt from Season 4's Exotic Tartare and Antonia from Season 8's Gumbo, which was the worst signature dish in your opinion? The responses on the thread are hilarious, and an overwhelming number of them think that the answer's Matt. 
They say that Antonia at least had a concept that was executed horrifically. Matt's dish was awful, from conceptualization to execution. What do you think? Which dish would you rather taste? As for me, I'll just pass, thank you. But this next contestant took her obsession with apples to the next level. You see, just when Jackie was ready to plate chicken, sausage, and lamb, she decided to throw in apples for good measure. So in the holiday platter challenge, each team had to make three platters, each representing different holidays, and each of them had to feature three dishes apiece. With hot dogs, mac and cheese. 40 minutes on the clock, Jackie and Kristen teamed up to prepare the 4th of July platter. To spice things up, Linda Fears from Family Circle joined as a guest judge. Both judges had the power to award a point to their favorite dish on each platter. Plus, Ramsey dropped the bombshell that the winning team's best platter would get featured in an upcoming issue of the magazine. So let's check in on that 4th of July platter, huh? But one look at the dish and Jared had some serious questions. Is that a hot dog with apples on it? He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw a hot dog with apples on top. Like, there's Chicago style, and then there's... whatever this is. But Jackie was confident. She presented her beer poached sausage with pickled red onion and apple. And the judge's reaction was one for the books. It isn't really working for me. Ugh. Not where they belong. Zero points. However, the criticism didn't stop there. Because her next dish was even weirder somehow. Burger with apple slaw. You got apple twice. Apple once again, and this time in a freaking cheeseburger. Oh, it's a little under there. Damn, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not gonna let you eat that. I'm sure it being raw didn't help, but I don't think it would have gotten any points if it'd been cooked to perfection anyway. However, Kristen stepped in with her grilled corn and jalapeno aioli, finally earning the team a point. Finally, we have some yes. flavor. Were they the points? Yeah. Well, who knew grilled corn could save the day? You grilled corn. But if you thought apples on random dishes was a weird combination, then you have no idea what this next dude had up his sleeve. In the pork creation challenge, Scott found himself in a bit of a pickle. He was the fifth person from the red team to select his pig, and he ended up with one labeled sweet potatoes. As they discussed their dish, he made some ridiculous suggestions. We're gonna do like a nice sausage and we're gonna garnish with prunes. Blood sausage and prunes, huh? Yeah, I'm not sold, and neither was Fran. Now you get to cook him. During the cook, Scott teamed up with Maria, and he swiftly took the reins, giving instructions to the woman. Kind of sit back and watch how everybody works. How are you guys doing over there on the prunes? You gonna try and fry them? What a charmer. And Siobhan was definitely charmed. I say take it out now, wrap it in foil, and let it rest. I say another minute. Do another minute then. Ramsey even called him out, questioning if he was trying to take over the red team. Scott claimed he was merely suggesting, but tensions continued to rise. And then came the moment of truth. The judges were blown away just by looking at it. I'm not pleased with the plate. That's why I don't look happy. I'm really, really not. Things got wild when the judges asked whose idea it was. Who in the chose prune with blood sausage? Talk to me, red team. Scott completely avoided taking responsibility. Oh, so now you don't want to be any part of it, huh, buddy? Fran and Nilka were pissed, to say the least. Anyway, Scott and Maria were the last pair from the red team to present their dish. A sweet potato soup garnished with ham hock. And the crowd goes mild. I asked for the ham hock as the main ingredient. And you're serving me a sweet potato soup garnished with a spoon? Unfortunately, they lost the round to Jay and Salvatore. The red team ended up losing the challenge one to two and faced the punishment of cleaning the pig pen outside and giving the pigs a bath, all while sporting farming attire. Man, that stinks, huh? But anyway, speaking of disgusting dishes, I think I'd spontaneously combust out of embarrassment if I had to present something as hideous as this. Wow. Props to Jen to stand there and take in all the criticism without hurling excuses because she had nothing to do with that lame-ass duck breast. That was all on Melissa Furpo. 
You see, what happened is during the wedding planning challenge in season three, Melissa proposed a change that left everyone raising their eyebrows. Instead of sticking with lamb, she suggested the women should go quackers and use duck as the main dish. Jen, being the cautious one, expressed concerns about cooking time. But the team ultimately went with Melissa's decision because she was being very bossy about it. How I wish they didn't, but the damage was done. When it came to preparing the duck breast, Julia confidently decided to sear it. However, Melissa quacked in with a different idea, leaving poor Julia feeling a bit plucked. Not only that, Melissa also managed to throw a few feathers at Bonnie Moorhead along the way. It was enough to make anyone feel a bit ruffled, with conflicting instructions taking flight in the kitchen. Amidst all the squabbling, Julia took the duck breast out of the oven to let it rest. But in a moment of kitchen confusion, she accidentally placed it right back in to keep it warm. What followed was more squawking and bickering. Even Rock, with his keen ears, couldn't help but hope that the feathery argument between the Hell's Bietches would lead to their downfall. I mean, just look at him, you guys. So, as the cooking reached its crescendo, Julia and Melissa discovered their unfortunate truth. The duck breast was overcooked. But did Melissa take responsibility? Nope. When Ramsey asked both the teams if they were happy, the woman squawked in unison that they were not. Julia, pointing her culinary finger, blamed Melissa, claiming she had been acting like a kitchen dictator. Melissa, however, defended herself, asserting that she wasn't trying to juggle everything at once. Ramsey swiftly reminded her that he never appointed her as head chef, emphasizing that the challenge was all about teamwork. It was time to break free from those ducking egos. D sorry, autocorrect. I think you heard it right, though. As the news broke that the wedding couple would be tasting their creations alongside GR, Melissa's feathers stood on M. She was horrified. Desperately trying to convince GR, dishes should be kept under lock and key. But GR turned a deaf ear to her concerns. The show must go on. It was a humiliating experience for the entire red team. And let's be honest, the blue team winning that challenge, ah, too easy. There was no competition at all. And well, Rock kinda already knew about this outcome, right? He was just as confident as Royce Wagner during the intense four ingredient challenge in season 10. The only difference being Royce Wagner's confidence backfired. You see, Royce had set his sights on the luxurious lobster as the star of his dish. His masterpiece, a whole poached lobster infused with saffron and thyme. After taking a bite of his own creation, he seemed very convinced that it was freaking delicious. As the final blue team member to face the judges, Royce squared off against Christina Wilson. Little did he know, a hairy situation was about to unfold. Douglas Keane discovered this. A long hair lurking within the dish sent shockwaves of disgust through the room. An irritated Clemenza Caserta couldn't help but ask why anyone would dare to serve a hair-infested dish to a Michelin star chef. Yeah, pretty gross, right? Ramsey, never one to mince his words, demanded an explanation from Royce. Royce, perplexed and caught off guard, claimed innocence, insisting he had no idea how the hair found its way into his creation. But wait, there was more. Michael Simarusti, like a culinary detective, revealed that the lobster still had its not-so-appetizing shit sack intact. Yikes, there goes my appetite for dinner. Clearly, Royce's dish fell short of expectations. He managed to score only three stars, leaving the team astounded. Meanwhile, Kimmy, in a moment of pure disbelief, couldn't help but ask this. Royce just served hair and a shit sack to Michelin star chefs? Like, what the fuck are you thinking, dude? Same question, Kimmy. I have the same bloody question. Up next, though, is Michael Mike Aresta. And ah, uh, where do I even begin? He stepped up to the plate as the fourth contestant from the blue team in season 12. He faced off against Kashia, hoping to impress the discerning palate of GR. Little did he know, his dish was about to hit a rather cheesy bump. Mike proudly presented his creation, a plate of tortellini with tomatoes. However, when GR inquired about the filling for his tortellini, Mike's confession left everyone a bit shell-shocked. 
The interrogation continued as Ramsey pressed him about the tomato sauce. Mike reluctantly revealed that he had used canned tomatoes. Man, that's a lazy attempt. The disappointment in his eyes was palpable as he angrily tossed the dish into the trash, dismissing it as a joke. Can you even blame him? Gabriel couldn't help but question why on earth Mike would serve Ramsey packaged food. Yeah, anyone who knows Ramsey knows how much he hates canned food. I mean, it's an atrocity. Coming back, in this round, Mike's culinary skills fell short compared to Kashia's offering leading to his defeat. His pride was wounded, and he couldn't fathom why GR would casually discard his dish as if it were packaged dog food. Voicing his frustration, Mike said, I'm a little insulted. It's not like it's packaged dog food. But Ramsey, never one to shy away from confrontation, swiftly called him up to the front, demanding an explanation for his outburst. Caught off guard, Mike found himself at a loss for words. Ramsey, not one to tolerate insubordination, made it clear that if Mike had anything to say, he should say it to his face, not behind his back. Continuing our love for spectacular dishes, I am sure you'll remember Moe's Pasta by Monique Booker from season 14. When Ramsay inquired about her marinara sauce, Monique confidently revealed her secrets. You know the worst part? To everybody's annoyance, she didn't even think she was wrong to use pre-made sauce. Instead, she continued giving attitude to Ramsay. Wow, what a joke. To nobody's surprise, she scored only one point, and the red team eventually lost the challenge. Speaking of pre-made food, Kevin Ridland's Chicken Caesar Piadina comes to mind as well. Ramsey wasn't exactly thrilled with the concept. In his eyes, a salad on top of a pizza was a culinary crime. But the worst was yet to come. That's not all. The horrors continued to persist. In a moment of blunt honesty, Ramsey looked Kevin dead in the eye and asked if he wanted to go home. Ouch. I think he really meant it. His elimination in episode 5 is easily one of the most brutal in the show's history. What made it even more surprising was how he seemed to disappear into thin air after being pulled from mid-service. No closure, no exit speech, just poof and out. Now let's be real here, Kevin had his fair share of struggles in the kitchen. Those scallops were his kryptonite, even after Ramsay showed him how it's done. It's gotta be frustrating to see someone stumble on the basics, especially when they've been given a crash course by the big man himself. But here comes a contestant who repeatedly tried to mess up a dish only because it was someone else's special recipe. So Giovanni was holding down the fort at the meat station. With the final six orders piling up, he understood the stakes. Survival meant acing the entire service. Yet, he found himself repeatedly opening and closing the convection oven, catching Ramsey's attention. You keep on opening closing that door. In half an hour's time, you're gonna be sorry. Okay, chef. Okay. Then came the crucial moment. Giovanni sent up Ben's chicken special. And if those oven shenanigans were anything to go by, imagine how well it was cooked. I had to refire a chicken. I had him in the oven for a long time, but then they start to burn. What special chicken? All Ramsey could see was a drumstick that hadn't even gotten started cooking yet. I need the chicken! About one minute, chef. Meanwhile, Giovanni confessed he needed a minute for the refire, and openly admitted he had no clue how to nail the dish. Anyway, amidst the chaos, Ben remained steadfast. He knew that if he cooked his dish flawlessly, the entire dining room would walk out happy customers. The pressure was on, but Ben was determined to deliver perfection. On his next attempt with Ben's dish, disaster struck again. In this time, a chewed up drumstick made its way to the plate. Is that like a chewed up bit of chicken from the dog? Yeah, that's your special. Yeah, have a word with him, yeah? He's given up. Dude got hungry, I guess. Poor Ramsey was so beyond through with them. Hurry up, Giovanni. Yeah, but I'm not chef. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Ramsey decided to shake things up. He sent Ben over to the meat station to assist Giovanni with his own special, which definitely took the pressure up a notch. As the night ended and tensions ran high, Ramsey confronted him for being mentally absent from the competition. His poor performance and backtalk during the service led to his elimination, marking the end of his journey in Hell's Kitchen. 
And good riddance, I say. Now, I'm sure there's a ton more disgusting food Ramsay has had to taste over the course of 18 years of Hell's Kitchen, and I know you are dying to share your thoughts. Which is why you can now connect with me and fans just like us on my Discord server. And yep, I got an exclusive one for those of you who always ask for more. Because who knows? Sometimes chefs may present disgusting dishes just to sabotage their team. I mean, anything can happen on Hell's Kitchen. Which is why you need to like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications to stay updated with all the latest buzz from inside the kitchen. And if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out this next video right here. Believe me, it's even crazier.